Shooting at night can be scary. When you're on an indie budget, sometimes you don't have the money for a big generator or a whole bunch of lights. When you don't have the right resources, it can make you feel helpless. For example, I know that there's a killer right over there, and I can't see him. Okay, now I can see him, but I can't see the environment that he's in. That is not good. But you know what is good? Is that we shot this entire sequence with just one light. And today, we're gonna show you how to do it. Let's get started. So you want to light a night scene, and you want to do it right, but if you don't have the right tools, there are so many ways that it can go wrong. In my opinion, trying to get a well-exposed shot at night can be a rich man's game. An entire arsenal of lights and generators are needed to light up a uh, external forest or even a haunted graveyard. And if you're like me, you probably don't have the money for that. The only way that a lot of indie filmmakers can get a quality sequence in the darkness is either blowing their entire budget on gear rentals or using day to night color grading and post. But that, my friends, is no longer the case. Introducing the inflatable portal light. Pop this guy, you got a little LED in there, and it's ready to go. No more wasting your money on a giant air star. Just buy 10,000 of these, put them in a giant net, fill them with helium, and send them right above your set. You see? It's perfect. You know what? Never mind. That's an absolutely terrible idea. How we really lit that opening sequence is a technique that we call lighting in plates. It's a form of compositing that weaves several shots together to provide ample lighting coverage in your entire shot. Take our wide reveal shot here. It may look like a normal shot, but this is actually several shots taken in the same place that were stitched together in post. One for keying the subject, one for backlighting the killer, and the others for filling in the background, which all come together to form a fully lit scene. To capture all these separate shots, we placed a camera on a tripod, capturing a wide shot of all the necessary components. Now, an extremely important thing to remember is that you cannot move the camera at all. For all the plates to match up correctly, you have to have the exact same frame in each plate. Any movement at all from your camera, you're gonna have to reshoot the whole thing. So we put some sandbags down next to the camera to prevent any movement. And again, we use just one light for this shoot, the Aperture 300D with a softbox attachment. It's a super versatile light that blasts a ton of great, even light wherever you point it, and we use it constantly here in our studio. A cool feature of this light is that you can use it wirelessly by attaching a V-mount battery to the ballast. This is just in case you're in a really remote forest or somewhere out in the wilderness where you have no access to a single outlet. Before you start setting up your light, plan where your light is gonna be coming from. If you're looking to mimic moonlight, which is a directional one source light, the direction needs to be uniform across all plates. We decided ours was gonna come from the top left of the shot, beaming down to the bottom right. One other thing that you have to look out for is visualizing what's going to be masked out for each plate. If you have any moving objects, such as a person walking, make sure they stay within their artificial boundaries so they don't accidentally walk out of their individual frame. For our first plate, we recorded a blank template with a lit up shed, just as a backup for the masking process later in post. Our second plate was the initial key light used to light both the shed and the subject. This was placed high and pointed downwards on the left side of the shed off screen, which created a nice soft moonlight that doesn't use too much light. Our third plate was our killer spotlight. To achieve this backlit horror looking shot, we took the softbox off the 300D and replaced it with the aperture Fresnel attachment, which concentrates the light to a single beam source. If you don't have the Fresnel attachment, using barn doors will suffice. Our fourth, fifth, and sixth plates were accent lights to brighten up the rest of the frame. That includes some directional light pointed at the trees and some fence lighting that was passed through some branches to give it some dimension. I even placed a dead body in there to fill out the scene, which if you look closely, is actually me. So this horror short is now a sci-fi short where the killer is killed past me and present me is running away from future me uh, who's trying to kill the present me, but I'd already be dead if my past self was dead because of the time continuum. We'll figure this out later. You're also probably gonna shoot some close-ups and inserts for your short. You can easily use just one light to create a really soft key in your subject from up high. On our handheld shot, we raised up the softbox and pointed it down and across the subject, 
spilling just enough light on its face to bring out its features without any grain. Now after you've wrapped shooting, we move on to the stitching part of shooting with plates. It's actually a lot simpler than you might think, and you can do the entire thing within Adobe Premiere. Bring all those clips into Premiere. Layer them on top of each other in the timeline in order of the largest place on the bottom and the smaller accent place on top. Now toggle track output on all the clips except your first and your second one. You can leave the base blank clip unmasked since you will be layering other composite layers over it. Go to the opacity settings of your second clip and select the pen tool. Outline the parts of the clip that you would like to keep as your layer, then feather the edge so it blends in with the others. Repeat this process for each layer, taking your pen tool and only selecting what each plate needs to provide in the shot. Once you've got those layers assembled, now you can go into the Lumetri color settings of each clip and start to match them to the other clips. If one area is unnaturally brighter than the rest, pull down its curve and match it to the others. So since this clip is obviously static, but you want to add in a little crawl zoom, you can just nest your clips together and adjust the scale keyframes from there. Now you got a fully composited shot comprised of six different shots. Now obviously this was a lot of work to just get one shot. A more practical use of lighting with plates is whenever you need to shoot an ultra wide shot and can't practically do it without the light in the shot. To easily mask out the light, but keep the light output in there, take two shots. One with the light in it, and the second with the light out of frame, but lighting up the dark area of the previous shot. Bring these both into Premiere, mask out the side with the light in it, feather and color adjust from there. Now you have a well exposed shot that you would have only been able to get with a powerful HMI. So now you know how to light a night exterior with just one light. Hope this helps all of you out there that can't afford a giant outdoor lighting setup to get the shot you need. As always, like, comment, subscribe, press that bell, and let us know in the comments if you have any tricks for shooting at night on a budget. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.